You guys know that I love my brows, so we're going to try out some new products today. So this is the brand new Colourpop Feather Effect Styling Wax, and we're going to give it a go along with some of their brow pens. They have shades light brown, medium brown, and black brown. And I'm going to go with medium brown today. These products are all gifted, so thank you very much. This is so cute. It's like a little compartment. And I'm going to use the brush that they sent me over also, and I'm just going to mix it into the product. And it's quite a big brush. I really worked it in there, and I'm going to start to brush it up. I really like how big the brush actually is because it really grips onto the eyebrow hairs. Look how spread out that brow is. Girl. It's a very dry product, like I can't really feel it. Um, and I've just squashed it down into my face, I guess. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how it holds up. So this is their brow pen and it is a very fine pen. So I'm just brushing it into my sparse areas. I'm running out of time, so go to part two. This is why you should never date multiple people at once. A story time, I guess. This story takes place when I was 17. Or 16. Okay, no one cares. It was a long time ago. And girl, back in the day, I was getting played. Left, right, and center. Played like a game of football. I had a distinct taste for F-boys. And that was going on for some time. Until your girl said enough. Enough of this buffoonery. I'm not getting played by men any longer. And I am going to become a player myself. I know the logic is really off, but I was 17, so cut me some slack, okay? So my brilliant idea was, I'm just gonna talk to multiple guys, and I will figure out which one I like in the end. And I'm gonna date that one. Now, in my mind, the plan was flawless. And they do always say, don't put your eggs in one basket. So I end up meeting a couple of guys, and I really like this one guy, but I decide I'm keeping my options open. When I was a kid, my parents worked pretty much all the time, so they required me to have a babysitter. My babysitter was always the same girl. She was 16 or 17 at the time, and she was absolutely stunning. Keep in mind, I was around 8 or 9 at the time. But there's one weekend that she came over that I'll never forget. So the night started off like usual. When she got there, she cooked me some dinner. Actually, it was grilled salmon. This girl could cook. And she was super lenient and cool, so after we got done eating, she let me watch an R-rated movie with her. But once it was time to put me to bed is where things got insane. She walked me up to my room and told me goodnight and that she loved me because we were pretty close at the time. Well, I tried going to sleep, but it wasn't working, so I started playing some video games. And after a while, I got bored and still wasn't tired, so I decided to go back downstairs to talk to the babysitter. But when I got downstairs, she was laying completely unclothed on my couch. Um, doing this? I was at a loss for words. She was so beautiful and this is the first time I'd seen anything like that in real life, so I could not stop looking. But a few seconds later, she noticed that I was looking at her. Like and follow for part two. But we was pulled up on the side and next minute you know, the cop car comes up behind us, grabs my dad out of the car, pushes him against the car and then hits him and punches him. I was screaming, I was crying. My dad was taken away and chucked into the cop car. It all happened so fast and me and my brother were left behind. I don't know why they left us there, but we was legit by ourselves. I'm now 14 and only two years ago did I realise that my dad is actually a felon. And he was arrested on drug charges. Story time about how my dad got caught being a drug dealer. So I was in second grade, my parents were in a pretty stable relationship, my mum was a nurse's aide, doing really well for herself and providing for our family. My dad, on the other hand, was jobless. Also, I thought, so one day my dad was taking me and my little brother to kindergarten. My brother was in kindergarten, I was at big school, and we decided to stop at McDonald's drive-thru for some breakfast. My dad opens the middle compartment of his truck to grab some money, and I see a little baggie of green stuff. I was like eight years old, I had no idea what it was, I didn't question it, I just sort of let it be. I was so young, I didn't think anything of it. Until we got stuck in traffic and my dad was starting to get really mad. He was honking his horn to get people out of his way because he just wanted to get off. Clearly, he had clocked on before I had. I looked back and there was a cop car behind. I have feared cop cars all my life. So I was actually petrified as it was. And on top of that, my dad was going crazy. No wonder my dad was so keen to get out of this trap. My go-to glam makeup routine. Skincare. Eyebrows. Eye base. Eyeshadow and eyelashes foundation, my cream contour, brightening concealer, powder bronzer, loose setting powder, blusher, lower lashes and mascara, lip liner and lipstick, lip gloss, and lastly highlighter. And this is my full glam routine. Story time about when my mom caught me doing it with my best friend. 
I was 16 at the time and there was this new boy that moved in across the street from us. He was super cute and I noticed him right away. My parents were super strict. I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend or even any guy friends and I knew right away that I wanted to at least become this guy's friend because he was so cute. So one day I told my mom, hey, why don't we take cookies or something to um, welcome the new neighbors in town? And my mom was like, that's a great idea. So we end up going over and we meet them. They're really nice. And the cute boy comes downstairs and he tells his mom he's going to go to Bible study. Well, when we get home, I tell my mom, hey, you know what? Maybe I should join a Bible study group too. And my mom was like, great idea. She even told me to go ask him about it since he had mentioned it. One day he's mowing the lawn, so I decided to go talk to him and ask him about the Bible study group. He actually ended up taking me there that same day and we had a fun class. Over the next few weeks, we became really, really good friends. Best friends. We told each other everything. But there was always attraction between us. Let's give this a go. Any given opportunity to try and make it look like I have more of a snatch jawline, I'm here for it. So let's go. I'm going to use the Touch and Sew bronzer, and this one is in the shade medium. So I am just going to use like a little flat top brush, swirl it in the product, and by the looks of it, she literally goes like that. But guys, this looks scary because look how light my neck is at the minute. Ugh! I put it across here, and then I'm going to put it down this bit and now i'm gonna blend it out oh dear and then she conceals i'm using the xx revolution just like that i think and then also down here but this still looks too dark okay guys so this is this side that is cream contoured and this is the side without so i'm gonna put on the rest of my makeup i'm gonna do a little bit more chiseling and i'll be back so i have been playing with my makeup but guys the jawline snatched I stepped into boots and of course I came out with more than I needed. They had a gorgeous pink range up, which I of course had to get. And then a pineapple range. I thought I may as well get this as well. Plus three packs of wipes. It came to £18. £18 for all of this. By the way, this is not an ad, but I was just generally shocked. It was three for two. So I think originally it was supposed to be around £30. So I thought that was an absolute steal. So I'm going to test these out and show you guys if they're worth it or not. This is all Boots Own Rage, and I'm about to start doing a makeup look. So we're going to prep my skin. So first of all, this is the Glow Essence, and it says to put this on before your moisturiser. Smells absolutely gorgeous. I'm now giving a go at their eye cream. This has a super thin consistency, and always press this into your under eye. We're going for the pineapple range. This is their serum. Ooh, okay. Smells legit like pineapples. This glow serum is giving me vibes. This is honestly like a primer and a juice serum in one. Out of everything, I recommend. So, I have not taken advantage of these three minute minute videos. So, here we go. Here's a full in depth makeup look. I start off the Bondi Sands lip moisturizer and it is absolutely amazing makes my lips super juicy and then i go in with this revolution primer i don't actually use this that often as it is quite sticky but i thought i'd use it today and i also mixed it in with the milk makeup moisturizer i use the unicorn cosmetics eyebrow soap and i actually really liked it i've never used it before but they really kindly gifted me it so i thought i'd give it a go i do skip over the rest of my eyebrows and i use the revolution brow pencil and i also use the collection last and perfection concealer i always use that concealer is a ride or die i will be doing this eye look today and it was a lot harder than i thought but here i go i start off with my base first and i use this revolution foundation you guys would have tried this foundation already it is amazing i mean i've never tried it before until today but i loved it and i just put this all over my face no it's not my shade so please do not comment it because i know it's not my shade but i do mix it in quite well i then use the revolution cream contour palette clearly i really like revolution today but they sent me over a bunch of products and i thought i'd give some of them a go and i actually really loved the way that this cream contour sat on my face so yeah i did go in with the nars concealer i love this it is amazing i use the shade cream custard i am craving chocolate right now has anyone tried any new chocolate bars and if so what have you tried because i would love to know but yeah this is me putting on some bronzer but yeah i'm now just putting on some bronzer put it on the cheeks nose sharpen that jawline and then i always go with the laura mercier powder it's their loose setting powder this one's in the shade translucent i also love their translucent honey one however i'm not as tanned today so i'm not going to use it and i'm just using their translucent if you haven't tried this lottie london powder to be fair i normally use their water 
warmer shade and not the translucent but i couldn't find it today then you need to try it and with this brush as well this brush is from it cosmetics it will be a life changer like honestly you can match up your foundation perfectly when you put this at the bottom of your makeup i use the milk makeup highlighter and then i just go in with this palette and dip into the black shade here i'm just doing swishy motions and i'm doing the makeup look that spencer created I think this is so gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't really suit me that much. However, it's still pretty. I go in with the Unicorn Cosmetics eyelashes. These ones are so pretty. They're so fluffy and so gorgeous. And then I go in with this Desert Sun Lip Liner from Primark. I love their Primark lip liners because they're just so creamy. And they're literally a pound. So you can't really go wrong, can you? I do decide to go in with a red lip today to really finish off this look, really to pop out that eye makeup that I've done. And this one is from Rimmel. It is such a gorgeous red shade. And this is my finished makeup look. I feel so gorgeous in this. And yeah, goodbye. I love you guys. Mwah. I made my teacher cry. <laughs> Story time. When I was in second grade, I had this teacher and she was the devil. And we're going to name her Miss Jackson. And the reason I call her a devil is because she would say really mean things to me to my face. She would be like, Ty, stop talking like that. You sound like a little girl. Or your favorite color can't be pink. You have to choose one of the boy colors. And since I was so young, I didn't understand how serious these things were. And I didn't know I can get her in trouble. And I would go home sad like every single day. Eventually, my mom noticed and she asked me what was wrong. So I told her some of the things that Miss Jackson would say to me. And my mom was mad. And my mom was like, the next time she says something to you, say something rude back. And if you get in trouble, I'll handle her from there. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Now, Miss Jackson was a heavy lady. So I knew if I said something rude to her, it would be about her weight. Though we don't body shame around here. We don't do that, okay? So I'm in school eating lunch with my friends who happen to be girls. And Miss Jackson comes up to me and she's like, shouldn't you be eating with the boys? So I looked at her and I was like, shouldn't you be eating a salad? And the lunchroom start laughing and then she started crying. So every time my parents went grocery shopping, I tried to bring in all the bags at once. No matter how heavy the bags were, I pushed myself to the limit because I was not coming back outside. Sometimes I was holding so many bags that my fingers felt like they were going to just fall off. But nothing was going to stop me. Uh, uh, oh, man. Who do you think you are? Superman? And you better not drop that bag. That got my eggs in it. That's when it hit me. There had to be an easier way to do this. So I did some research. I found the video of a guy using his entire arm to carry more bags. Genius! A week later, I was ready to carry those bags. I was in a house waiting for my parents to get home. And then I heard the car home. Well, get out here and get these groceries. I loaded my arms with every bag but one. I grabbed the last bag, but my fingers gave out. My eggs! Boy, you gonna get it! I just ran in the house with the rest of the bag. <laughs> for breaking the eggs, my dad took my TV away. Story time of why it's never good to be in a best friend group of three. So a little background information. I was in fourth grade and I was nine years old about to turn 10. Now I know you're thinking that's really young. Well sis, I was just smart enough to see the red flags early on, unlike half of you who probably didn't see them. Anyway, so I had two friends we're gonna call the one Becky and the one Mia. Now let me tell you a little bit about Becky. Becky was kind of a bitch. Now anytime that she saw Mia and I having our own conversation, she would pretty much bully us. And she would have two of her other friends tag along and do it also, Brooklyn and Riley. So the one day we're walking to PE and Mia and I are having a conversation. And in our gym class, you had to line up in groups of three. So it would go Mia, Becky, and then me. Well, because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia, I decided to sit in Becky's spot. So we're sitting down and then Becky marches over to where we're sitting and just stands there and stares at us. Then she walks away and goes and sits with her other friends. And at the end of gym class, she comes back over to us. Like for part two. If anyone's wanting to know how to get revenge on someone who spread rumors about you, listen to this story and it may come in handy. So I had a friend that we can call Miranda who was obsessed with me. I was genuinely friends with her, but she would never give me a break. I could not get a breather from her at any point in time. Everywhere I went, she went. And this girl would actually get so upset with me anytime I would go over to another friend's house. I knew she was really insecure and just trying to get attention, so I tried to be patient with her. However, one day I just could not take it anymore. I got into a massive fight with her over how overprotective she is i literally said you are a stage five clinger and in response this girl ended up joining my basketball and softball team which i've been on for forever she told her mom that i was bullying her which was a complete lie but then her mom went to the coaches she got me kicked off the team and they continued to spread rumors about me I ended up losing my best friends and even my boyfriend over the rumors that she spread about me. So that's when I decided to get revenge. So I decided that I was going to send her over an apology gift with makeup in it. Which was a mix of drugstore items and poison ivy. Okay, 
Okay, so part two. So I went and hid in the music room. Dad was in the PTA room, which was close by. Literally started crying because I was so scared and they weren't telling us anything because we were too young. I guess they didn't want to scare us. That didn't work. Once the code red was over, about 30 minutes later, we went to class. I went to go find my dad and make sure he was okay and see if he knew anything. And he didn't. When I got in my classroom, we were all talking about it, and my teacher said that the man just walked in and told them he was looking for one of his teachers from, like, 15 years back. Huh? They gave us a description of the man, and I realized it was the same man from Dunkin' Donuts. He just walked in my school. I was freaked out because I saw him at Dunkin' Donuts before school started, and I hoped I never saw him again. But... A few weeks later, I saw him again multiple times at the same Dunkin' Donuts. He literally just stared at me all the time. So yeah, that's my little story. This is why you should never date multiple people at once, part two. So I was talking to like four guys and I literally did not like them. But I was determined to keep my options open. I just didn't want another guy to play me. As the time progressed, me and this one guy, the one I really like, started actually like dating. I mean, we didn't define a relationship, but it looked like a relationship. In my head, you have to like define a relationship. And my man's, he's not doing that. I even met his mom. Now, this is where it gets truly embarrassing. So one day I'm getting drinks with one of those other three guys, even though I'm basically in love with this guy. And we're sitting in this cafe, having a good old time and who walks in through the door the mother of the guy i want to date i should have saw this coming but i was dumb so my heart dropped and she freaking waved at me like mm, i see what you're about and needless to say she told him and me and the one guy I really liked never talked again you want to see how i do my eyebrows i'm gonna show you so if you have a look at a few of my recent videos i actually tried out a bunch of new ColourPop products so i'm gonna show you my updated brow routine and of course, like I said in my other video, this ColourPop product has made it into my everyday routine, a holy grail. So it just looks like this, and then I'm gonna, also going to use the brush that they actually sent to me. They sent me these products, which I'm really grateful for, and they are generally amazing, so that's why I'm recommending them to you guys. So I like to get the product and generally just push it through my eyebrows until all my eyebrow hairs are coated, and also to their like facing upwards. I love the soap brows look, so mine are really fluffy. I then go ahead and press them down. A new product that I've been absolutely obsessed with is this Benefit one, it's their brow pomade. It's a new product for them and I'm using shade number 4, again they really kindly sent this to me and I'm also going to be using the brush that they sent over to me too. And I promise you do not need a lot of this product for any sparse areas. Finally I concealed my brow with number 6 collection concealer. This third time is from a follower and she said she liked to be called Desiree. So last year Desiree was starting college and she lived in a dorm room. She went to school for communications and she liked everything about it including the new friends she made. One of the new friends she created was a guy and his name was Jalen and she was really starting to like him. They met in math class and from there they became friends. Jalen was low key hinting that he liked her also. He did nice things for her like help her with schoolwork, buy her lunch and was just an all around good person to vent to. Couple days before winter break, Cassidy was finally ready to tell Jalen how she felt about him. So that day they had plans to go out as usual. They ended up going to the mall, got food and for the first time they went to Cassidy dorm room they turned on a movie they both fell asleep in the middle of the movie a couple minutes later cassidy woke up and her leg was wet when she stood up come to finding Jalen peed in her bed i ain't gonna lie everyone in british history has that bloody sofa and if you don't know what i'm going on about go have a look at it but today i went to ikea i did a haul i did a little haul over on my instagram account cara downton if you want to go check that out it's that massive bag down there obviously there's two pillows at the top because I'm gonna redecorate my boyfriend's living room. Actually, I'm not de re la la la. I'm not redecorating it. I'm actually putting some of my stuff in there, or stuff I would like in there, because I want to have my place in there. So yeah, I'm gonna give it my girly little touch, and I'm gonna add my stuff so all oh, the bitches know. Just kidding. <laughs> But yeah, I did do an Ikea haul if you want to check it out, it's on Instagram. And I also did like PR hauls and shit like that. But oh my god, we was in there for probably about two hours and you could spend a lifetime in Ikea. Like there's just so much to go through. We also had meatballs, mash and the gravy. It was delicious. I had ten meatballs. I think I had seven. Part two of trying out the new ColourPop brow products. So as you can see, we've got this far and I actually really like the way it's stuck down. Like it looks like lamination. But it's now time to brush it down. Okay, so we're just going to scoop it down. Got really easy control 
because of how big this brush is. I'm really liking this so far. Like, this is stuck down to my face. I'm going to go ahead, put the rest of my makeup on. I'm going to go get glam. And we're going to see what it looks like and how it sort of wears. Especially with other products being surrounded by my face. So, this is the finished makeup look. It has gone a little dramatic. A little bit more than I was expecting. But, you know, it's magic. It's makeup, I mean. <laughs> but, guys, this goodie here, I think it's going to be a new favourite. So, if you see me overusing it, don't abuse me. Absolutely love the brush and for the pen, I like it but probably wouldn't use it that often. I wouldn't reach for it. Um, but yeah, that's that and I love this look. Part two about why it's never going to be in a best friend group of three. Like I said, Brittany hated it whenever Mia and I would have our own conversation. And I sat in Becky's spot in gym class and then she got mad at us because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia. So she goes over with her other friends that literally bully Mia and I. So at the end of gym class, she walks up to both of us with Brooklyn, and she literally is just standing there. And then Brooklyn goes, do you need me to do it for you? And me and I look at each other like, what the fuck is going on? And then Brittany's like, no, I just wanted to tell you guys that I don't want to be friends with you anymore. She was like, you guys are just so fake. Like, you never include me in anything. Which was completely not true, but we were like, whatever. So then the next day at school, Brittany comes up to Mia and I, and she's like, hey guys. Like, this bitch was bipolar as fuck. And we're like, we thought you didn't want to be friends with us anymore. And she was like, no, I just meant I didn't want to be best friends. November last year, I gave birth to our first baby. It's the first in my family and the sixth in my husband's family. It's important to say that all six kids are boys and my mother-in-law is in some sick, crazy girl phase. Ever since we made the announcement, my mother-in-law convinced herself that I was pregnant with a girl. I told her that once we knew the gender, she'd be the first person to know. Lo and behold, it was a boy. We told my mother-in-law we were having a boy, but she was still convinced it was a girl. She told the whole side of the family that it was a girl, and I corrected her, but she told them I was just annoyed because I wanted a boy first. I wanted a healthy baby. I didn't give a damn about the sex. She told them that we are naming the girl after her mom, which we will never do because my hubby hates his grandma. When the baby shower gift started to come, I noticed a lot of things that wasn't in the register, like embroidered things with the grandma's name on it. Well, the baby was born, and imagine the surprise, it was a boy, just like we have been telling everyone. The problem, for them at least, is that now the baby has plenty of girl clothes that we plan on putting on our son, specifically for his family video calls and for pictures with them. Imagine we get lost in love Nowhere to go when you fall out of touch Maybe I just don't know enough Of this language you call love I'll leave it to my head to think Cause right now I'm in between And lately I've been scared to blink Cause I've been losing too much time to sing And all these voices in my head Like hello are you there Why do I feel this is why you should never date multiple people at once. A story time, I guess. This story takes place when I was 17. Or 16. Okay, no one cares. It was a long time ago. And girl, back in the day, I was getting played. Left, right, and center. Played like a game of football. I had a distinct taste for F-boys. And that was going on for some time. Until your girl said enough. Enough of this buffoonery. I'm not getting played by men any longer. And I am going to become a player myself. I know the logic is really off. But I was 17, so cut me some slack, okay? So my brilliant idea was, I'm just gonna talk to multiple guys. And I will figure out which one I like in the end. And I'm gonna date that one. Now in my mind, the plan was flawless. And they do always say, don't put your eggs in one basket. So I end up meeting a couple of guys. And I really like this one guy. But I decide I'm keeping my options open.
So every time my parents went grocery shopping, I tried to bring in all the bags at once. No matter how heavy the bags were, I pushed myself to the limit because I was not coming back outside. Sometimes I was holding so many bags that my fingers felt like they were gonna just fall off, but nothing was gonna stop me. Uh, uh, oh man. Who do you think you are, Superman? And you better not drop that bag. That got my eggs in it. That's when it hit me. There had to be an easier way to do this. So I did some research. I found the video of a guy using his entire arm to carry more bags. Genius! A week later, I was ready to carry those bags. I was in a house waiting for my parents to get home. And then I heard the car horn. Well, get out here and get these groceries. I loaded my arms with every bag but one. I grabbed the last bag, but my fingers gave out. My eggs! Boy, you gonna get it! I just ran in the house with the rest of the bag. For breaking the eggs, my dad took my TV away.